Anyway, stay safe. Stop killing each other. Keep your ass at home. They're the three valid points. All right, safe. I often wonder why people do what they do. Even if I don't agree with their actions, I can kind of grasp their reasoning behind committing a crime, if it makes sense. But what would possess a person to pull out a Beretta in Soho, West London, on one of the busiest and most jam-packed streets in London, and shoot a man twice in the back after he's leaving a club? Like how irate do you have to be to lose all sense of reasoning? Now, I'm against killing, just to make that clear. But surely, if you wanted to shoot dead a person, there's a ton of better areas to try and attack your victim. The victim, Tristan Samuels, was shot twice in the back, as he and a friend who had been stabbed fled a fight that erupted inside the Opium nightclub in Soho. Now, it's no secret that clubs need more stringent search processes in place, because we've seen cases where someone has had acid thrown on their face, We've also seen cases where people have pulled out a knife in a club, so that states the bouncers are not doing enough to search revellers, or the people who are carrying knives are getting more creative with their hiding places. Now once the violence spilled outside, there was absolute carnage and mayhem. Now alcohol and adrenaline do not mix, so on the CCTV you could see people running in every direction on the crowded Rupert streets, at 3am on August 25th, 2019. And during all that mayhem, that's when the perpetrator, or gunman, or the shooter, or an idiot, whatever you want to call him, decided to get his vengeance. 39-year-old Richard Palmer was caught on CCTV racing after the stab victim, who was obviously already injured because CCTV showed the stab victim was already limping before he collapsed. Again, Richard Palmer was caught on CCTV drawing a Bretta handgun from his bag, and as he got closer to the victim, his intent to kill was very, very clear. In the CCTV footage, you could also hear a person shout to Tristan to run before shots were fired, Woolwich Crown Court was told. Now, this altercation is the definition and embodiment of violence being taken too far. It's obvious that this was an intended hit. The aim of the violence or the shooting was to seriously injure another human being at the very least or, best case scenario for the perpetrator, to kill. Now Richard Palmer chased his victim as if his life depended on it and as he drew closer to the victim again he fired his gun. He shot his victim Tristan Samuels twice in the back before deciding to walk back to his silver Jaguar that was parked nearby and then he drove off as if it was the simplest thing in the world to do. This was attempted murder. Now, because Tristan Samuels was a beast and he had no desire to die in the middle of the street like some wounded animal, he was able to take himself to a central London hospital, despite the fact that he suffered from internal organ damage. His friend was also taken to hospital for stab wounds, which was categorised as non-life-threatening. Now, because 39-year-old Richard Palmer could not see past his own ego and anger, he did not dispose of the Jaguar that linked him to the shooting which was a grave mistake. Therefore, police were able to trace the car, which still had his fingerprints on the rear door panels. Now, the Met's investigation reveals that Richard Palmer did contact a friend to get rid of the gun a day after the shooting. That's 24 hours. Now, after a quick chase and a struggle, the police arrested Richard Palmer's friend, who was the person responsible of getting rid of the gun. This is when the proverbial crap hit the fan and it hit it in a massive way. I mean, you couldn't even make this up. This was a trap star's worst nightmare. A search revealed £48,000 in cash, and a quantity of heroin and crack cocaine worth £27,000 in a property linked to the friend. And if that wasn't bad enough, police also found a catch of firearms and ammunition hidden in the airing cupboard in a rucksack. And then again, if things could not get any worse, police found a further quantity of heroin valued at over £95,000. Now, as for the shooter, Richard Palmer, he was sentenced to 15 years and 6 months after pleading guilty to attempted murder and firearm offences. As for the friend, Roberts, he was sentenced to 15 years for possession of multiple firearms and supplying Class A drugs. 
Now that's the drug empire down to Swanee. It's not coming back. It's finished. So 